Okay, so now that we've got some basic notation down for generating functions, let's, let's start doing uh, distributions uh, via generating functions. So um, distributions, again, we have so many items. We want to give those items to uh, different people or you know, arrange them in different categories or however you want to see uh, fit. So let's, let's just dive right in and let's ask a silly question. So how many ways, um, so I'm just going to write number of ways. So how many ways can we give n apples to one child? Well, this is obviously stupid. The answer is one. Okay, but let's let's go way over the top and come up with a silly way to answer this using generating functions. Um, so what I want is for every n, I want you know an input of n to give me an output of one. That is to say, okay, yeah, I know. But let's let's just try let's just try to to shoehorn generating functions in here. I want the all ones sequence. Right, and the all ones sequence, as we saw before, has a generating function of one over one minus x. So if, you, if I write one over one minus x, that is a way to communicate all the ways of giving n apples to one child, and I don't know my plurals. Okay, and that's, again, that's kind of weird, but recall, this is the generating function for the all ones sequence. Okay, strange, but fine. So, so again, strictly speaking, one over one minus x is not the answer, it's not the number of ways, but what I would say is the coefficients from the generating function of one over one minus x give the answer to this question. Okay, so let's let's do something a little bit harder. What's the number of ways to give, I can put a preposition in there, number of ways to give uh, n apples to two children. Now, this should be n plus one. Right, again, we can do this in our head. Uh, this is, we, we, we could answer this question, this is like uh, like we did in class, there are n chairs that have to be manufactured by two workers. So I've got, uh, you know, the, the quick answer is I've got n apples here. And then I've got then, of course, n plus one spaces between the apples. So if I put a spacer here, this is like stars and bars, that's two apples for one child and n minus two apples for the other child. If I put the spacer here, that's zero apples for one child, uh, n apples for the other child. So, so we have ways of answering this. We know the answer is going to be n plus one. But let's, let's use um, generating functions to get this answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the generating functions together. So I've got one over one minus x times one over one minus x. Why would I do that? Because this is the number of ways to give n apples to one child, and this is the number of ways to give n apples to another child. And when I look back at this proposition from the previous lecture, um, I see that for the nth stage, I'm gonna have the sum of all the different possible distributions that add up to n, if I multiply these uh, generating functions together. So this is gonna give me a generating function of one over one minus x quantity squared, and we know that this leads to the, um, to the sequence uh, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot or that aj equals j plus one. Oh, I, I guess I should say here, aj equals one. So uh, the, nth, the, the nth answer is one there, the nth answer is n plus one here. All right, so let's, let's keep going. Um, now let's suppose 
In a slightly more complicated example, let's suppose we're giving n apples, again, how many ways can we give n apples to three children, but we have that uh, the child number three can only get uh, zero, one, or two apples, less than or equal to two apples. All right, well, this is gonna be just like the answer to the previous question, one over one minus x, it's the number of ways uh, to give uh, n apples to one child, number of ways to give n apples to two children, and now, since the only possible outcomes for the third child are zero, one, and two, I'm gonna throw in uh, a silly type of generating function that only has, that can only contribute zero, one, or two to each coefficient, so x to the zero, x to the 1, x to the 2. So my final answer then is whatever the aj's are from this generating function. Well, this might take uh, just a little bit of work. Oh, I didn't write solution. So we're going to take this generating function and spit it out. Well, what do I get? I get 1 over 1 minus x plus x, uh, sorry, uh, 1 minus x quantity squared plus uh, x <clears throat> times 1 over 1 minus x uh, quantity squared plus x squared times 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. Sorry, I had some issues writing over here. All right. Well, I know this is going to give me this sequence. The sum as j goes from 0 to infinity of um, j plus 1 times x to the j. That's my first generating function. I know this will give me the same sequence, but it's shifted by x. This is an x, that's a plus. So this is going to be the sum as j goes from 0 to infinity of j plus 1 times what? x to the j times x is x to the j plus 1. And finally, this one will give me the sum as j goes from 0 to infinity of j plus 1 times now x to the j plus 2. So if I uh, collect all these together, I'm going to have the sum as j goes from 0 to infinity of what? Well, I'm going to have for, for the jth step, just by sort of changing variables in each term, I'm going to have j plus 1 plus j plus j minus 1 so this is just changing variables from each sum to get the coefficient for uh, x to the j here. And this gives me the sum as j goes from 0 to infinity of 3j x to the j. So my final answer then is aj equals 3j. Um, and that would make sense because there, there would be uh, n plus 1 ways to do it. Um, you know, so that, that, that like like n ways to do it for n children, except we've got to multiply that by three because that third child it's zero, one, or two apples. And, and this should make sense because if we just just pick, you know, for some some amount n, well, we either um, we give that third child zero, one, or two apples. And if we give the third child zero apples, then we have n plus one choices for the other two children by the previous example. If we give the third child one apple, we have n minus one apples, which gives us n minus one plus one choices by the previous example. And if we give the third child two, then we have, uh, <clears throat> then we've got uh, n minus two plus one apples. And adding these all together, uh, gives us 3n. So, so, so that answer makes sense. All right, let's continue with slightly more complicated examples. Um, so I've got two more examples following this same vein. <clears throat> so now, let's suppose we have um, a child 
that can only get two more than a multiple of three apples. So n apples, again, and one child, but they can only get uh, two mod three apples. So some, some number that is two more than a multiple of three. Well, we recall that um, we could get the alternating ones and zeros by taking one over uh, one minus x squared. So to get um, every third one and everything else is zero, we've got one over one minus x to the third power. And this is, we can see this just by changing variables or by running a derivative game again. And this is going to lead us to the sequence um, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, etc. So this would be the answer if the child could only get a multiple of three apples. So either he'd get zero apples one way, no ways to get uh, one apple, no ways to get two apples, three apples one way, no ways to get four, no ways to get five, six apples one way, etc. But now we want two mod three, so we're gonna to have to shift this. So to shift by two, we're gonna to have to multiply by two powers of x. And our final uh, generating function is going to be x squared over one minus x cubed. And this will give us uh, the sequence zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, etc. So uh, for the final question uh, in this section, let's just pile a whole bunch of stuff together. So uh, how many ways can we distribute, again, n apples to two children? But what we need is that we have one child gets either one or two. And the second child should get an even number. Well, the, oh, this is even number. Okay, well, uh, the first child just like before, should only be able to contribute either one or two powers of x. So that will be the generating function for the first child. Second child, then, uh, modeling this after the previous example, is going to have uh, a generating function of one over one minus x uh, quantity squared. So, when I multiply these two together, I'll get the generating function I want, and that's going to be x plus x squared over one minus x quantity squared. And we we really want to know, you know, how many ways can we distribute these apples, or you know, what is what is this output sequence? And we can see this by manipulating this formally. So I'll factor out an x, and I have x times one plus x. I'll factor out the bottom into one minus x, one plus x and I'll cancel these, and I get x over one minus x. Well, I already know uh, what one over one minus x is, so this is going to be a shift of one over one minus x. So this is x times one over one minus x, which means it's x times, the sum as j goes from zero to infinity, of x to the j, so it's just a shift of that, which means this is the sum as j goes from zero to infinity, x to the j plus one. This gives us, well, there's no zeroth coefficient, so it's going to be the sequence zero and then a bunch of ones. And why should this make sense? Because we need the first child to get exactly one or two apples and the second child to get an even number of apples. So. Once we get on down the line for large n, we just give the second child um, the largest even number of apples they can have, and then the first child gets uh, either one or two. 
So for example, if n was, say, 16, then we would give the second child 14 apples, and the first child would get two apples, right? Uh, but the only problem we have, uh, and so even for, for, for just one apple, the first child gets one apple and the second child gets zero apples. The only problem we have is for zero apples, the second child is satisfied, but the first child cannot be satisfied for uh, zero apples. So this sequence makes sense. And those are just some basic uh, examples of using generating functions.